Good morning on this second Sunday of Easter. You're listening to a live broadcast from Luther Memorial Church in Pierre. Luther Memorial is located at the corner of Nickley and Prospect, just west of our state capitol building. The ministers here at Luther Memorial are Senior Pastor Craig Wexler and Deacon Chris Wollman. Today's organist is Linda is Lori Kennecke. Hymn numbers this morning are 363, 377, 361, and 389. Our worship service is about to begin, and our opening hymn will be Come You Faithful, Raise the Strain, number 363 in the ELW hymnal. Uh, glad to have everyone here this morning. A great turnout with so many seniors, uh, our high school seniors. Uh, blessings to you. Congratulations a couple weeks ahead of time. Um, just glad to have so many here. By the way, if any senior snuck in and did not get their quilt yet, I would in interest you to go back there and grab one. You will need that for later on. By the way, seniors, it is not nap time. It is not nap time. We run the risk of giving you the quilt now so that you do not take the nap during, during worship. But Glad to have you guys a part of this service. Um, a few other quick announcements. Um, as education transitions for high school seniors, education we hope never transitions for us here in the church. Many adult ed opportunities coming up. Uh, Deacon Chris is lead leading another stint of her daughters to disciples on Mondays at noon and six starting tomorrow. Um, our Like Jesus Bible study that is immediately following worship here tonight or this afternoon what this morning after worship and again on Tuesday that will commence again today uh, my wife is leading a Bible a book study this uh, this summer uh, if you are interested reach out to Carmen directly or pull me aside there'll be a sign-up sheet for that here in the coming days out there as well and gentlemen there'll be a unique opportunity for you guys this summer involving uh, involving shooting at the range and Bible study with Pastor Craig so if you're interested in any of those things as time goes uh, please just keep, uh, keep the website at your fingertips or just uh, touch base with us here for different opportunities there. Um, also, with, uh, with another transition, Julia, our Children, Youth, and Family Director, she is stepping down as director, transitioning back into another chapter of her life. So we give thanks for all the work that she has done with us over this program season, helping there. Hold her and family in prayer there as well. Um, and more information will be, uh, will be had in that department as well very soon. With that being said, I invite those who are able, let us worship, let us begin though, as we are an Easter people in the season of Easter, we are also remembering baptism each time we gather. Alleluia, Christ is risen. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the seed for the Israelites. Now in these waters, you flood us with mercy and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, both now and forever. Amen. Our gathering hymn is Come, You Faithful, Raise the Strain, number 363 in your red hymnals in the pews in front of you.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Have mercy on us, 
You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, and peace to God's people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, and peace to God's people on earth. And peace to God's people on The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. O oh God of life, you reach out to us amid our fears with the wounded hands of your risen Son. By your Spirit's breath, revive our faith in your mercy and strengthen us to be the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. I invite all the children up for good news time. And if you're little, little, you can always bring some big person with you too. That would be just fine. So good to see everyone. You know, graduating seniors, this was you. And just like that, you are off to your next adventure. But remember when you were this age, I'll have you sit on the floor because I have something for all of you. Spread out, spread out spread out. So happy Earth Day. That was just the other day, right? April 23rd. One of my favorite days is Earth Day. How cool that it happens during the season of Easter. Oh my goodness. What do we have in the basket? Earth balls. Do you think there's one for everybody? Oh yeah. Now when you get the ball, would you hold on to it? Don't throw it, at least not yet, all right? Okay, hang on to that, there's one for you. So why do we celebrate Earth Day? It's good to have your Earth. That's the response I like. It's good to have the Earth. The Earth Day reminds us that we live in this beautiful creation, and it's a big world that God created for us to live, right? Big world. Sometimes we think our world is right here in Pier, or for some of you out in the great land of Hayes, which I am going to get out there and give a little tour of that area. One for you, and one for you. Oh, my goodness, there we go. Does everybody have an earth ball? Very good. So we celebrate Earth Day because we celebrate the earth and how beautiful it is. But you know, something else happened yesterday. Did anybody notice what happened outside yesterday? It rained. Now, I was starting to lose faith that it was ever going to rain or sleet or snow. I wondered if it would ever happen. It's, it's been like two years. Is there snow right there? Boy, that and our friends up in North Dakota and out west in the Black Hills, they got walloped. I'm a little jealous that they got all that moisture. And I was starting to believe that it was never going to rain. I lost my faith in the rain. And then it happened. Have you heard of Thomas? Thomas is the disciple that when Jesus rose from the grave, full of life and gifting us all life, and the disciples got together in the room and they were kind of afraid. Can all of you do your little shivers like you're afraid? Yeah, Thomas wasn't there. We don't know where he was, but he was not there. Here is a Bible with pictures on it. I love the Sparks Story Bible. Here's Thomas. Let me show you a picture. There he is. He did not believe that Jesus was raised from the dead. 
and he said, I need to see Jesus' wounds. I need to put my hand in Jesus' wounds. And what did Jesus do? Showed up like the rain when we need it and we know it's coming. Jesus shows up. Jesus shows up in our world, right? And in our globe and says, I am taking care of this world and I invite you all to take care of it with me. Lots of things to remember. Earth Day, Easter, Jesus rising, and Thomas. Let's pray for the earth and for all those times we need a little help with believing. Hold your earth ball. Everybody got it? Stand up with your earth ball. Turn around and face the congregation because they need to see your earth balls too. Okay, I'm going to come this way. And we're going to pray for the earth. So everybody, hold your ball, hold it up, and close your eyes and repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for the earth. Thank you for the rain. And thank you for stories like the one about Thomas. Thank you for Jesus showing up in our lives every day. Amen. Awesome. You can keep your earth ball with you, and we'll see you later. First reading today is from Acts chapter 5, verses 27 through 32. When they had brought the apostles, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teachings, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read the psalm. Uh, psalm is 118. Please read responsibly. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die, but live, and declare the Lord, the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has been by the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, O Lord, save us. We pray to you, Lord, prosper our days. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and has given us light from a procession with branches up to the corners of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. The second reading is from Revelation chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. 
Grace to you and peace from him who is, who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the Alleluia verse and the reading of the gospel. Our gospel this morning comes from John chapter 20. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house the disciples met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he, Thomas, said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came, stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us have a witness. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us have a witness. Let us have a witness of what God has done. Resurrected Jesus is the living, breathing witness of what God has done to the disciples gathered in fear with the doors locked in our story today from the Gospel of John. Resurrected Jesus comes and stands among the disciples, alive and breathing, offering peace. 
There's that word again. The word uttered by the angels at Jesus' birth. The word uttered by the followers laying cloaks along the road to Jerusalem as Jesus passed by. Peace. Peace be with you. God's intent for how all people should live. All of us. Free from fear. Free from what keeps us from God, which is sin, and free to live, sent to serve one another. Peace. God's intent. At Jesus' birth and at the entrance to Jerusalem, peace that only God could give through Jesus dying and rising and living and breathing. Let us have a witness. Resurrected Jesus offers peace to his disciples, living, breathing Jesus, breathes on them the Holy Spirit. Let us have a witness. Oh, Thomas, Thomas, you were not there when Jesus was the witness of what God had done. Where were you? Were you trembling all day long under your kitchen table by yourself? The witness of the disciples, their words, we have seen the Lord, were not enough. Thomas needed wounds, needed to feel Jesus' wounds. Thomas needed a witness he could touch. And so, one week later, God provided a witness Thomas could touch. The disciples this time, including Thomas, gather again Doors shut again, and Jesus stands among them again and offers peace. Peace be with you. Ah, there's that word again. Peace. Let us have a witness. <laughs> witness Jesus invites what Thomas needs, a touch of the wounds. In fact, Thomas puts his hands into the wounds. My Lord and my God, Thomas is given what he needs. We hearers of the Gospel of John knowing things because we know this story. We know things because of the Holy Spirit blowing through our lives as Easter people blowing every day, right? Whew, weeks of wind. We know resurrected Jesus is the witness of what God has done. God's doing is raising human Jesus from the death as witness to what God does for all people. God who loved the world raised Jesus. God who loved the world raises us mm -hmm, from our own sin, our death, of what keeps us from loving God and loving one another. Jesus offering peace is word of God, the same word who would not let the cross and death have the last word, the same word that opened the tomb for the risen Jesus to come out of. Jesus is word of God, resurrected by God and is of God. And for Thomas, or for the days we feel like Thomas, and for all people, Jesus offers peace that is the witness of what God intends. Do not fear. Do not judge. Live with grace and love. It, it isn't that Thomas or maybe even us do not believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. We believe. It's more that Thomas and sometimes the rest of us just let fear get in the way of that believing. Fear that becomes overpowering. Fear that gets in the way of a witness. God knew fear can get in the way. God in the way of Thomas, receiving the witness of the disciples. So God placed Jesus once again right where he was needed to strengthen faith and to be a witness of what God intends. Whew, God knows what gets in our way. And Jesus, both human and divine, is the witness we all need to drive us from fear <clears throat> and into asking God what we need for comfort, for healing, for blessing, and for life. 
For two years of pandemic, we did not breathe deeply. We didn't breathe deeply when we were close to each other, especially, right? We wore masks to keep breath away. We spread ourselves out, all for love of neighbor, called to love each other. And some days, <gasps> we felt like we were holding our breath. We know how important breathing is, taking in the air, filling our lungs, knowing what this does to oxygenate, there's a word, our bodies breathing deeply. And so, dear Easter people, hearing the story of resurrected Jesus as witness of what God intends, peace and love and hope and life, let us take Jesus' words to heart. Let us practice receiving the Holy Spirit by breathing deeply. All right. Are you comfortable? I found a stool so I myself could sit. Relax your shoulders. Hmm. Your core. Your leg muscles. Stretch them out. Oh, yeah. I invite you to close your eyes and take in a deep breath through your nose, counting to five, and then breathing out through your mouth, counting to five. While you breathe, I will count. In for five, out for five. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, and out. One, two, three, four. With your eyes still closed, do it once more, breathing through your nose and out through your mouth. This time I won't count because I want to breathe with you. Here we go. <sighs> While we hear the wind blowing in the background. Open your eyes. Yeah. Oh, we do not think enough about breathing. Do you know a friend or a, or a family member who has trouble breathing? I do. I know they do not take for granted breathing. For those of us that breathing is a snap, we don't think about it. Every day this week, I invite you, yep, seven days, the amount of time Thomas needed and ached for a witness until God placed Jesus right where Thomas needed him. Breathe deeply, dear ones, twice a day for seven days, in and out. And might you use this breathing for a centering prayer. Graduating seniors, I invite you to do it. Maybe when you're sitting in your car, getting ready to go out on the boat, Maybe when you're gathering with your friends. Maybe when you're getting ready for bed at night and you're like, how many things do I need to do before graduation? Take a breath in and a breath out. Moms and dads, you might need to do that too. <laughs> As Easter people, practicing centering prayer, it helps us take in the witness of the resurrected Jesus, breathing the Holy Spirit on us. All people, every day we are given this gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit, as breath, as wind, when we are in need of it, the Holy Spirit shows up. And as we practice centering prayer, we ask God each day, my Lord and my God, give me a witness. I need it today. I need to experience Easter today. Show me how to live life alive today, so that Jesus, who was sent to serve, may again remind me how to serve today. My Lord and my God, give me what I need to see you, to touch you, to hear you, so that I may believe again and again and again. And the Holy Spirit, breath from Jesus, sent by God as God's self, will put Easter witness into your path, like rain, like green shoots coming up 
like a duck pair on the church lawn looking for that nest. Ah, oh, Jesus alive, God declaring that we are alive. No fear, no doubting. So even in our asking, even in our practicing this centering prayer, God showing up and knowing what we need surprises us. Why is that? After years of following Jesus, that's what a Christian is, one who follows Jesus. Jesus still surprises us. <laughs> and our God, who delights in giving us what we need, delights in these holy surprises. We might sit and wait, and then nothing happens that seems particularly spirit-filled, and then we get up and we get about our day, and before we know it, God has nudged us into encounters with creation and friends and family, with work we are called to do, getting ready to graduate. You dear seniors, our passions and our hobbies gives us exactly what we need for an Easter moment. God gives us a witness. Given a witness, we can give witness. My Lord and my God, we can give witness through faith. The gifts God gives us in resurrected Jesus, love and grace and forgiveness and freedom to serve and peace. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of the day, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen, read hymnal 377, as you're able, please stand and sing. River 
connection to God the I am. Jesus is risen and we shall arise. Give God the glory, alleluia. Let us profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I invite the ushers to come forward as they pass the offering plates and we prepare ourselves for a time of prayer. Please join with me in our offering prayer. Living God, you gather us into your peaceable reign. You welcome us all at your table and show us your wounded and risen body. May these gifts we offer reach out to others as nourishment for faith in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, we ask you to enter into our lives this day. We ask you to walk right into that space in which we gather. We gather in fear, Lord, of that Easter story, but you come upon us and you say, peace be with you. Give us the courage to leave this space. Give us courage to be sent out to do your will and to do your work and to reflect your light into the darkness of the world, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, we ask you to be with all the people of the world this day and to bring wholeness to the body of Christ. 
We give thanks for the moisture you blessed us with this past week and again yesterday. We ask that you, Lord, will sustain our farmers and ranchers in these weeks ahead. We pray for our high school seniors who, are, who we are lifting up in prayer and guidance this weekend. Bless them in the next chapters they enter into. Give them guidance and wisdom as they discern their vocations in which you might use them in our world. And as we continue in this Easter season, we pray for the courage and fortitude to fix our eyes on your empty tomb well into our future. We would like to turn away from the cross. The world begs for us to forget about your Easter miracle, but help us to stay focused in this world on you and you alone. Lord, in your mercy. God of strength and healing. We ask you to continue being present with all of our families and our prayer lists, especially David Forney, Denise Telkamp, and Mary Hedman. We also lift up the Anderson family as they grieve the loss of their father this week, Perry Anderson. Remind them of your resurrection promise today and forevermore. Lord, as always, we also ask you to be present with our servicemen and women throughout this world who are giving themselves for our security and freedom, and we especially pray for their loved ones back at home. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who also gathered us in and taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Graduates, we are delighted to honor you as you graduate from high school. We are proud of you. It is our privilege to affirm you as members of this congregation. You have completed, are completing an important phase of your lives, and you are entering another. So we invite our graduates and their families to move to the aisles. So stand, bring your quilt and your Bible. Come to the aisles. Any aisle will work. We are so grateful that you are all here today. And as you move to the aisles, parents, if you would take the quilt and open it up and wrap it around your graduate. You guys can spread out if you need to come down the aisle. It's all good. <laughs> Do you have room? Everybody have room. Wrap it around. And then take the Bible, their gift. And maybe we ran out of Bibles. More are coming. Yeah, we've got if we more ran coming out, along. Oh, my goodness. That's a good thing. So place the Bible in their hands. All right. And uh, now up on the screens are prompts for our liturgy of blessing. Graduates, I ask you to affirm your commitment to a life of faith in the body of Christ. As you celebrate your achievements and prepare for your new endeavors, do you thank God for the many ways your faith has been your strength and your guide? We respond, with God's help, I do. Let's do that more boldly, seniors. With God's help, I do. As you consider the next steps of your journey of life, do you acknowledge God going with you, before you, behind you, below you, above you, and within you? God's help, I do. <laughs> as you make choices about your life, will you offer your gifts to the world as part of the body of Christ and welcome the support of a family of faith? With God's help, I do. I invite the congregation to stand. And wherever you see a graduate, maybe turn and face one of them. Yes, look around behind you, around you, and beside you. But you also have to look on the screens because here is what we offer as congregation to our graduate. People of Lutheran Memorial, do you claim these graduates as brothers and sisters in Christ called to ministry according to their talents? In, in God's, God's love, love, we, we claim, claim them. them. As their home congregation, do you promise to support them, take an interest in their future, be with them in their celebration, in their sadness, welcome them whenever they return home, in, in God's, God's love, love, we, we support, support them. them. Do you promise to faithfully pray for these graduates, placing their futures into God's loving hands as they make their choices? In, in God's, God's love, love, we pray, we pray for, them. for them. Let us pray. 
Gracious God, you bless your servants with many achievements. We give thanks today for the milestones that these graduates have attained and continue to attain. As they begin new phases of their lives, may they know your love and all the experiences they have. Bless the parents of these students who have raised their children and nourished them in Christian faith. Give them strength in your holy presence. Give them many joyful reunions with their sons and daughters, those who are leaving home to go far away and those staying close by. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us join together in the singing of the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Go out into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to what is good. Return to one evil for evil, or return no one evil to evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn is Christ is Alive. Let Christians sing number 389. Moms and dads, give them a hug. Christ is alive, let Christians sing the cross and empty to the sky. Let streets and homes with praises ring, love drowned in death shall never die. Christ is alive, no But saving, healing here and now, and touching every place and time. In every insult, thrift, and war, where color, scorn, or wealth divine, Christ suffers still, yet love. Take time to bless the seniors, say congratulations to them. Adult Ed will start here in a bit, but until then, alleluia, Christ is risen. Go, go in peace, tell what God has done. Thanks be to God.
This concludes the Sunday morning's worship service from Luther Memorial Church in Pierre. You can join us for worship on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., Saturday evenings at 5.30 for our contemporary service, or Wednesday evenings at 6.15. If you're unable to attend any of these three worship services, you're invited to tune in to our live radio broadcast at 9 a.m. each Sunday morning here on KGFX 1060 a.m. or 103.1 FM, or just go to drgnews.com and click on Listen Live. Sunday and Wednesday services are also live streamed on our Luther Memorial Church Facebook page, and you can catch our sermon podcast on our website under the Connect tab. Our radio broadcasts do rely on financial support from members of Luther Memorial Church and other regular listeners and viewers. If you would like to sponsor a radio broadcast in honor of a special occasion or in memory of a loved one, just contact our church office at 224-8608. For now, on behalf of Pastor Craig Wexler, Deacon Chris Wolman, and the congregation here at Luther Memorial, we extend our prayers for you and yours for God's care and guidance throughout this coming week.